Hello students. Today we will be continuing with the chapter surface finish from the subject engineering metrology. In the previous lecture we have studied what is surface roughness. Surface roughness are nothing but the irregularities on the surface caused due to various actions. That is due to cutting tools, due to different types of materials. We have also seen what are the factors causing surface roughness. For example, machine vibrations, quality of material, type of coolant use, etc. Then we have studied what is primary texture and secondary texture. Primary texture also known as surface roughness. Primary texture is nothing but the irregularities of the smaller wavelength. Whereas secondary texture are the irregularities of larger wavelength. Then we have seen the different methods of measuring primary texture. The different methods were 10 point height method which gives a value Rz then the RMS value of the surface roughness and the third was the center line average value. We have seen how to determine the 10 point height method uh, roughness value by using the 10 point height method that is the Rz value. To determine the Rz value we first take a particular sampling length of the workpiece which is to be studied or we, on which we have to determine the surface roughness. Now sampling length is a that length of the workpiece on which we have to determine the roughness value. This is the profile of the surface or we can say the irregularities. Now in 10 point height method we determine the values of the 5 highest peaks and the 5 lowest valleys. For example R1, R3, R5, R7 and R9 were the values of the 5 highest peaks from the reference line which is parallel to the main line. Similarly, R2, R4, R6, R8 and R10 were the values of the 5 lowest val valleys from the reference line which is parallel to the main line. After determining the value of the 5 highest peaks and the 5 lowest value, we find the average of the difference between both the values and the value that we get is nothing but the Rz value or the roughness value. Now next we will see RMS value that is root mean square value. Now as per the definition root mean square value is defined as square root of arithmetic mean values of squares of ordinates of surface measured from the main line. Now let us understand what this statement means. Now here we have taken the sampling length as L a particular portion of the workpiece which has to be studied in order to determine the roughness value. So this is a sampling length L over which we will determine the roughness value of the surface. Now these are the irregularities of the surface or the profile of the surface. Now this is the main line. Now main line is a line which divides the, the surface into equal areas such that the area above the main line that is the area of this surface this surface as well as this surface will be equal to the area below the main line that is this surface and this surface. Now we will divide the main line into n equal divisions. You can see here we have divided the main line into n equal parts that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 till n. Now after dividing the main line into n equal divisions, now we will find the ordinate value of each of the point that is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 that is we have to find the value y1, y2, y3, y4. So we are determining the height of the various point on this surface. Similarly we will determine the value below the main line also that is y7, y8, y9, y10 etc. So after dividing the main line into n equal parts we will find all the values of the ordinates above the main line as well as the below the main lines. Now after finding the values of y1 to y1 now we will square all the values that is y1 square, y2 square, y3 square, y4 square till yn square. After squaring all the values you can see we have squared all the values of the ordinates from the main line. Now we will add all the values that is we will add y1 square plus y2 square plus y3 square and finally we will find the mean value of the squares by dividing it with the number of divisions that is n. So after finding the mean we will take the square root of the mean value and this value that we will get after taking the square root of the mean value is nothing but the RMS value or the roughness value. So in RMS value we have to remember that first we have to divide the mean line into n equal divisions after dividing the mean line into n equal divisions, we have to find the height of the ordinates of the various points on this profile. That is, we will take the height y1 to yn. After finding the values of the ordinates of the different points on the surface, 
now we will square all the values of the ordinates that is y1 square y2 square y3 square till yn square after squaring all the values we will add the values and finally divide it by the number of divisions so that we can get the mean values of the square after addition and finally we will put the mean value into the square root and the resulting value that we will get is nothing but the rms value next we will see c l a value center line average value now how to determine the roughness value by using center line average method now center line average va average value is defined as the average height of all ordinates of the surface from mean line without considering algebraic signs so it is nothing but the mean value of all the ordinates now let us see or understand this how we can find the cla value again we have taken a sampling length that is the length and for which we will study the or we will determine the roughness value now this is the mean line again the mean line will divide the uh, entire surface into two equal areas that is area above the mean line of all the area of the surfaces will be equal to the area below the mean line that is the area a1 a2 and a3 addition will be equal to the area below a1 and a2 and a3 now again we will divide the mean line into n equal divisions that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 up till n now for each division we will determine the value of the ordinates on the surface that is ordinate we will find the value 1 to h1 for first ordinate or the first point for the second point we will determine the value 2 to h2 then 3 to h3 4 to h3 similarly last up till last point n to hn after determining the ordinates of all the points on this profile we will add all the values now students note here that the values above the mean line are considered to as positive whereas the values below the mean line will also be considered as positive since this height h7 h10 h12 are lying below the mean line we should not take them as negative value since in the definition it is clearly mentioned that we have to take the values without considering algebraic signs so we will take all the values as positive values that is h1 h2 h3 will be positive similarly h7 h10 hz12 h13 etc will be positive after finding all the ordinates height we will now add all the values from h1 to hn that is h1 plus h2 plus h3 till hn and finally we will find the mean by dividing it with the n or the total number of divisions so this value which is obtained that is the mean value is nothing but the CLA value that is this value will give the roughness of the surface under study surface finish symbol now this is a symbol which is used to indicate the surface finish of any surface now this is a surface under study or under consideration in order to show the surface roughness we use this symbol which is indicated by a triangle now you can see various letters have been mentioned in this along with this symbol that is letter A b c d and e so whenever we have to show the surface roughness or the surface parameter of a surface we have to use this symbol on the surface now let us understand what these letters mean now a the value a indicates the roughness value that is what is the roughness of the surface we have to write this value on over this line that is we have to mention it here so the value a or the letter a will indicate the roughness value in microns or we can also place here roughness grades symbol that is n1 to n12 now students roughness values either indicated by uh, using numbers or by using symbols so if you want to write the numerical value we can directly write here also we can use the grade n1 to n12 instead of writing the exact values Second is the machining allowance, which is represented by the letter E. Now, what is machining allowance? In order to obtain a particular finish of the surface, some amount of material has to be machined or to be removed from the actual workpiece. So, the extra amount of material that has to be left on the workpiece so that it can be removed during the machining in order to obtain the surface finish is known as machining allowance. Now, third is the direction of the lay that is indicated by the letter D. Now what is direction of lay? Now direction of lay is nothing but it indicates the marks of the cutting tool that is whenever the cutting tool moves on the surface it leaves an impression of its point on the work surface. So 
the direction in which the cutting tool is moving the impressions will be formed in that direction and that is called as the direction of the lathe so direction of lathe is nothing but the cutting impressions or the marks left by the cutting tool on the surface of the workpiece under consideration now the letter c indicates the sampling length what is sampling length as previously uh, explained sampling length is the length which we considered for determining the roughness value for example if we have a workpiece of length l then we will not study the entire work workpiece length for determining the roughness value we will take a particular length in order to determine the roughness value and that particular length from the entire workpiece which we have selected for this study is nothing but the sampling length and the letter b here indicates the production method treatment or coating in order to obtain the particular surface roughness value which method we are using for example if we remove the material by using grinding method or we do electroplating then that type of method which we are using grinding or electroplating etc we have to mention here so this entire symbol will indicate the roughness value as well as it will indicate what is the machining allowance to be left to in order to obtain the roughness value what are the various method to be used to obtain the surface roughness and what is the sampling length as well as the direction of the lay now next we will study the roughness values as stated earlier roughness can be indicated by using values using grade numbers as well as by symbols now you can see here we have total 12 grades in indian standards that is n1 to n12 so each of these grades represents a particular value of the roughness for example n1 grade represents a roughness value of 0.025 micrometers whereas n5 represents a roughness value of 0.4 micrometer similarly n10 indicates a roughness value of 12.5 micrometers now you can see as we proceed from downwards to upwards the value of the roughness goes on increasing that is the surface will be less smooth so if we consider a surface having this roughness value then we can say that this surface is much smoother than this surface so less the value of the roughness value that is ra more will be the finishing of the surface so for each of these values we use particular grades so while indicating the surface roughness on a drawing by using symbol we can either use these values directly or we can use ins instead of these values we can use the grades to denote the roughness value that is n1 to n12 now for grades n1 to n3 we have used a particular symbol that is we can represent these roughness values or these roughness grades by using symbols also so here we have to use four triangles so wherever on production drawing you see this type of triangles that is four triangles it is indicates that the roughness grade is between 11 n1 to n3 and has value between 0.025 to 0.1 similarly the second group is from n4 to n6 for which we use three triangles then the next group is n7 to n9 for which we use two triangles and the last group is n10 to n12 for which the symbol used is a single triangle so where there is there are no number of triangles it indicates that the surface is much smoother so if we see these type of triangles on the production drawing these are used to indicate the roughness value of the surface or we can also use the grades from n1 to n12 also we can use the roughness value directly so each of these grades corresponds to a particular roughness value the lesser the roughness value the more the smoother will be the surface so if we compare this surface with this surface or uh, so two surfaces having roughness value as 3.2 micrometer and 6.3 micrometer then the surface with value of roughness 3.2 micrometers will be much smoother than the surface with the roughness value 6.3 micrometers so these are the representation of the surface roughness value direction of lay now it's explained earlier direction of lay is nothing but the impressions of the cutting tool which are left on the surface of the workpiece where it is being machined by the tool or is cut by the tool now the different direction of the lay are parallel perpendicular angular multidirectional circular and radial now for parallel direction of lay we use this symbol it is two parallel lines parallel to the plane of projection of view in which symbol is used now you can see this diagram this is my workpiece now for machining this workpiece the tool has been moved in a direction parallel to the lane that is in this direction you can see this is my workpiece 
the tool has been moved in a direction for parallel to the length of the workpiece so the cutting impressions left by the cutting tool on the workpiece will be parallel to the length so whenever we have to indicate the parallel the uh, direction of lay we use this symbol similarly when the cutting tool moves perpendicular to the length of the workpiece then it is indicated by this symbol where so whenever this symbol is used that is perpendicular to the symbol it will indicate that the motion of the cutting tool while removing the material from the workpiece is perpendicular to the length this is my workpiece you can see this is my workpiece this is the length of the workpiece from here to here and the cutting tool is moving in a direction perpendicular to the length third is the angular now in this case this is my workpiece top view of the top surface of the workpiece now first the cutting tool has been moved in one angular direction that is 45 degree towards right and then it has been moved 45 degree towards left so we can see here cross being forms so whenever the cutting tool moves in such a direction that it moves first in one angular direction we can say at 45 degree towards right and then it moves 45 degree towards left then the impressions will be like this and this is represented by the graphical symbol cross so whenever cross is indicated it will indicate that the cutting tool has moved in angular direction to angular direction uh, which are at some angle to each other then the fourth is multi directional now multi directional indicates that the cutting tool has moved in more than one direction it can be parallel perpendicular angular any direction so when the cutting tool moves in more than one direction for removing the work mat uh, material from the workpiece then we can say that the direction of the lathe is multi directional now see approx circular related to the center of the surface to which symbol applies now uh this type of marks are obtained while performing facing operation on the lathe machine when we perform a facing operation on the lathe machine the cutting tool removes the material from the circular bar in this manner that it move, that we can see circular impressions on the on the surface of the workpiece so when the cutting tool removes the material in such a way that a circular or the circles are formed on the surface of the workpiece then it is known as the circular direction of lathe and the last is the radial direction of lathe now this is used when the cutting tool moves in a radial direction for example this is my surface of the workpiece when the cutting tool will move from center to the outward direction then we can say that it is moving in a radial direction so whenever the cutting tool removes the material from the workpiece or the surface of the workpiece in radial direction then it is known as the radial direction of lathe so these are the different direction of lathe which indicates in what direction or what impression will be will the cutting tool live on the workpiece doing its motion so parallel direction of motion perpendicular angular multi directional then circular and radial next we will see what is sampling length flaws and lays now sampling length it is also called as cut off length this is very important sampling length is also called as cut off length it is the length of the profile necessary for evaluation of irregularities to be taken into account now as stated earlier that when we determine the value of the surface roughness we do not evaluate it over the entire length of the workpiece we select a particular length of the workpiece for determining the roughness value and other parameters so that particular length which is selected for determining the roughness value is nothing but the sampling length and is also known as the cut off length flaws flaws are defined as irregularities which occur at one place or at widely changing intervals in a surface example scratches cracks etc so scratches cracks etc which occur on the surface of the workpiece are nothing but they are called as flaws and they will occur not periodically they will occur at very ch widely changing intervals that is they will not occur at regular intervals lay as explained previous these are tiny scratches left behind the movement of the by the movement of the finishing tool on the workpiece during the process of relative motion with respect to the workpiece so when the cutting tool moves on the surface of the workpiece during the material removal process then it leaves an impression of its direction on the surface of the workpiece and that tiny scratches left behind by the movement is nothing but called as the lay thank you